and terms that are often used in, in this field, as I mentioned, myelopathy, uh, formal definition is a subacute dysfunction of the spinal cord. And these lead to upper motor neuron symptoms, everything up, right? And radiculopathy, where that little nerve root's getting crunched coming out of the foramen, for example, uh, it's acute, subacute, or chronic uh, dysfunction. Um, and it's very specific. And for better or for worse, unfortunately, these get noticed very quickly, right? Somebody's got a sharp pain running down their arm or to their fingers or to the thumb. That gets your attention. But in, in the neurosurgical world, it tends to be a less severe injury, right, than if the cord itself is getting injured, which can be very insidious in, in onset. Um, and for myelopathy, again, this, this constellation of weakness, and it's more than one muscle, um, that is the cords getting injured. So it tends not to be just say, you know, your thumb is weak or your wrist extension is, is weak. Um, there's numbness, again, more than one dermatome just due to the nature of the cord itself. Um, and hyperreflexia, dysfunction of, of fine hand movements. Folks tend to have difficulty buttoning buttons or doing zippers. Um, drop papers or drop the coffee cup, gait instability that tends to be a course where it's a constant stepwise decline in function, where they'll kind of be okay, they'll fall or trip, they'll get worse, but they never quite come back to where they were. And then it's just this gradual decline. The course and rapidity of that, that decline is hard to predict. No one really knows. Um, and every patient's different and their compression is different. And for radiculopathy, pain, usually the main symptom, as I mentioned, that gets folks tension right away. Weakness in a particular motor group, oh, my, I can't pull my arm up or, you know, um, can't squeeze my, my hand very well. Um, numbness in a particular dermatome and hyporeflexia, decreased uh, reflexes there. And Cotta-Aquinas syndrome, this is always taught classically as a nurse, one of the few neurosurgical emergencies, and it sure is. Um, this uh, studies have shown that if you really don't get to this within 24 and certainly by 48 hours, um, things can, can kind of stay the way they are. Um, and so uh, usually it's from an acute disc herniation, for example, that comes across as a broad disc and, and catches a lot of these nerve roots in the cauda equina. Um, and it results in weakness, numbness, a saddle anesthesia is kind of the classic um, board answer kind of thing, loss of bowel or bladder control and hyporeflexia. And often you get a call from the emergency department, folks will have one or the other um, of these and they'll say right away it's caught equina. Not necessarily, um, but of course you, you, it's always good to have a good clinical exam. That's the best thing always um, in imaging. Nowadays, it's, it's much easier to get an MRI or CT uh, than, than it was back in, back in the day, right? And so brown card, uh, again, going through some of these, these syndromes where um, you have uh, different types of pathology depending on sort of a unilateral uh, lesion to the cord. Um, say if that lesion's on, on the right, there's loss of touch and uh, vibration uh, and proprioception uh, below that lesion. Uh, and then on the left, there's loss of pain and temperature, depending on where the fibers are going and where they, they cross over. Very rare. I've only seen a few of these um, in, uh, in years of, of practice. Um, and, and so uh, this is just an image of a patient who is actually stabbed um, in the neck. And it came in through this side and presented with a brown cigar. Um, and so can happen. It's more of a curiosity and really knowing and testing uh, your knowledge of pathways. Than any. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.